Patrick Henry is born at Studley Plantation, seven or so miles southeast of here on May 29, 1736. Now his early biographers would often report that he was raised poor and not well educated. This is really not true. The Henrys don't have the money of the Randolphs, the Lees, and the Jeffersons, but they're never poor. Patrick Henry's father comes over from Scotland in about 1727, and he goes to work for John Sims, partially overseeing his plantation. And very early on, John Henry is buying land. But then a few years later, John Sims dies, and John Henry marries his wealthy widow, Sarah Sims Henry. So Henry uh, is going to be successful, and Patrick Henry is going to be raised as a gentryman, uh, as a member of the gentry on plantations with enslaved people. While his father will have economic problems in the future, and Patrick will actually help out with those economic problems, they're never really poor. What about his education? Well, he's educated in grammar school, as most members of the gentry are at that time. The family doesn't have the kind of money or the kind of time to send him away to college. College is very rare in the middle of the 18th century, but he's certainly well educated. His father, John Henry, and his uncle, Patrick Henry, who he's named after, are both graduates of King's College in Aberdeen, Scotland, an extraordinary education in the 18th century. And they're both going to see to it that Patrick Henry is well educated in the issues that a gentryman should know about in the middle of the 18th century. We're told that as a young man, Patrick Henry loved books, especially history, although undoubtedly, as it's often reported, he also loved hunting and fishing and was known to play hooky from his studies on occasion, perhaps not unlike other people raised in rural Virginia at the time. Later, when we hear these stories that he's uneducated, he couldn't read and write well, he spent his youth in the woods hunting and fishing instead of studying, we hear stories that he's poor, he's a greedy lawyer, even that he disliked George Washington, these stories are really made by his political enemies, most notably Thomas Jefferson. And we'll talk some about why Thomas Jefferson and Patrick Henry have a falling out. But we should read these stories with a great deal of care. Patrick Henry is certainly no saint, probably no Einstein, and it's probably true that he sometimes was fishing when he should be studying, but he certainly was a good student overall. A story that I think illustrates that. At some point in his youth, perhaps when he was out in the woods hunting and fishing, Patrick Henry breaks his collarbone, and he's going to have several weeks of imposed bed rest, but Henry's not going to waste that time. He decides to use his time to learn how to play the flute, and by the time he's recovered from the broken collarbone, he knows how to play the flute. And for the rest of Henry's life, he's very much engaged in music as well. He loves playing the fiddle and loves playing the flute. So he does know how to study, and he's a diligent and intelligent student when it's a topic that interests him. Now something else we should say about Patrick Henry, he's a very religious person, and religion's going to play an important part in his life, throughout his life. He's an Anglican, a member of the Church of England, and he stays so throughout his life and his career. But his mother, Sarah Henry, is a Presbyterian dissenter in an Anglican world. Well, what do we mean by that? The Church of England is the official church in the state of Virginia, excuse me, in the colony of Virginia at the time. It's the official church, which means that everybody, it doesn't matter whether you're Presbyterian, Baptist, or Anglican, everybody has to pay taxes to support the Anglican minister and to provide the Anglican minister with a glebe, a farm on which he and his family could live. You have to go to church at least once every four weeks, and that means you have to go to the Anglican church or a licensed dissenting meeting house, and there's really very few of these dissenting meeting houses. In fact, Patrick Henry's grandfather, Isaac Winston, Sarah's father, is fined in 1754. When Patrick Henry is nine years old, his grandfather is fined for allowing a Presbyterian minister to preach on his property without a license. So Patrick Henry is very familiar with this conflict between an established church and dissenting religion. Henry's mother, Sarah, oftentimes would take him to Pole Green Church, the church of the Reverend Samuel Davies. Now, Davies is an important person in Virginia history and American history generally. He's the first licensed Presbyterian minister in Virginia, 
And he's going to be very much engaged in the question of religious freedom and separation of church and state in the early years of the Republic. He's one of the great orators of early Virginia. This is the era of the first great awakening in the mid 18th century when we have these Presbyterian and Baptist ministers all over the East Coast. And Samuel Davies is considered one of the best. In fact, Patrick Henry later says that he is first taught what an orator should be by listening to Samuel Davies. Now, Sarah Henry would take Patrick to the Pole Green Church to listen to Samuel Davies, and oftentimes the family lore says that when they were coming home in the buggy or the wagon, his mother would ask Henry, what was it that the minister said? And Henry was known to repeat almost verbatim long segments of what Davies had preached about that day, a testament both to Samuel Davies and to Patrick Henry. Perhaps this role that he has, this opportunity he has to see Samuel Davies and to see dissenters fighting with an established church is one of the reasons that Patrick Henry is going to be so sympathetic throughout his political career for those people who are imposed upon by their government and especially those people who are told by their government how they should think and how they should believe. He becomes an advocate for religious freedom to a point. And we'll talk about that as well. By the early 1750s, Patrick Henry is a young teenager and doesn't really know what he's going to do for a career. So his father decides to set up William, his older brother, and Patrick as store owners. They buy some merchandise and they're going to open a small store here in Hanover County. But these are hard times. The French and Indian War is starting. Patrick Henry and his brother William seem to be selling things on credit more often than for cash, and they don't seem to be willing to squeeze their neighbors who are having difficulties themselves to try to raise that money. So that store, Patrick Henry's first career, goes out of business. He fails. By the time he's 18, he falls in love with a young Sarah Shelton. She's only 16. She's often referred to as Sally. And the parents apparently aren't very happy with this. A 16-year-old and an 18-year-old who has no career, no job, are going to get married. Within a year, by 1755, they have their first child, Martha, usually referred to as Patsy. And by the time they're done, they're going to have six children. And Patrick will have another 11 children with his second wife, Dorothea. But here in the early, 1750, uh, early period of 1755, Patrick Henry is married, he has a child, and he doesn't really have a job. Well, his father-in-law gives the new couple several hundred acres and six enslaved people, and he's going to be a plantation owner. Again, the plantation is here in Han Hanover County. But the land had been overworked. Tobacco tends to wear land out, and it really wasn't producing very well. By 1757, the home had burned down, and Patrick Henry decided once again that he had failed as a plantation owner. His career had failed, and so he's going to make a third try at a career. He sells one of the slaves, and he buys some more merchandise. He's going to open a second store and once again be a local merchant. The second store does no better than the first. Once again, people are buying on credit. The French and Indian War is going on. Money is hard to come by. And Patrick Henry is, once again, not willing to put the squeeze on his neighbors to try to collect most of those debts. So Henry fails three times as he's beginning his career. And yet each time he fails, he seems to be learning something. One of the things that's remarkable about Patrick Henry in these early efforts at a career is he's spending his time oftentimes with the common people here in Hanover County, the common folks, and he's learning the kinds of problems they have and why it's difficult for them to pay their debts at the store, the problems they're going to have with the British Navigation Acts and with British taxation. The second thing that's remarkable about these early efforts is that here is Patrick Henry, who we know is one of the founders of the American Republic, but he fails and he picks himself up, dusts himself off, and he tries again, and he fails, and he picks himself up, and he tries again, and he fails a third time, and he tries again. It's going to take Patrick Henry a lot of effort before he finally finds a career in which he's going to be very successful.